Okay, here we go, guys. So we are going to go ahead and get started this morning with how to capture high quality video content for digital marketing purposes, as well as navigating social media in order to uh, post your videos. So let me just go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so hi guys. So welcome to today's webinar for from Insurance Advisors Direct, how to capture high quality video content for digital marketing purposes and then navigating social media. But I wanted to start off with some very exciting news. Ooh. We are launching our podcast. So this podcast is called Dip the Direct Insurance Podcast, a podcast for independent insurance agents. And we are going to be launching on Tuesday, February 28th. And you can listen to us on Spotify as well as on Apple Podcasts. I'm hoping that we'll be able to expand into like Google Podcasts and Podbean and all this these other avenues. But for now, we're going to I'll be launching on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So I'm very excited. Let's go ahead and dip into some insurance. So, but uh, for now, let's go ahead and get into this high quality content for video, high quality video content for digital marketing. Okay, so why is video so important? Video is important because it is the closest thing to face-to-face -face interaction and is also beneficial to people who are visual learners. Quite a few people in today's world in today's world are either visual or kinetic learners. So the visual appearance of a video is going to capture their attention because why, why read when you can watch? If anybody has ever worked in a retail setting or just somewhere, obviously I'm sure you guys have clients that you've given them some paperwork and then they still have questions and you're like, well, did you read the paperwork? And their answer is probably no. <laughs> So right, why read when you can watch? It's also very beneficial because it helps spread brand awareness. Social media algorithms very highly prioritize video content because it retains attention for longer periods of time. These social media platforms, they thrive off of being able to retain viewer attention because they want to keep people essentially like addicted to using these social media apps. So using video in order to capture the attention of your viewers is going to help spread additional brand awareness, as well as being beneficial in the sense of that social media algorithms and platforms use video as a form of people are using video in terms of like a search engine. So as opposed to going to Google and typing in a question into the search bar, they're going to YouTube and searching for answers to these questions. They're going to TikTok to search for answers to the questions that they might already have. Video is also really important because of the percentage of businesses that that utilize video marketing. So since the year 2016, there has been an increase of 15% in the percentages of businesses that have been using video. And there are also quite a few businesses that have started doing video marketing within the last three years. They started doing video marketing more than two years ago. And obviously you've seen that there's been a big jump between one to two years ago, maybe then within the last 12 months, quite a few people are hopping on the bandwagon in the last week. And this is all from bloggingwizard.com. So out of the number of businesses and marketers that were asked, hey, would you continue to use video marketing in the next 12 months? You can see that obviously a good majority of them said yes. <laughs> and 32% of businesses do use video as a sales tool. And video marketing is extremely important in any marketing strategy. Again, because it does hold viewer retention for longer periods of time and is the closest thing to face-to-face -face interaction. You are better able to teach someone something and be able to convey information in a way that they will better understand than you would if you were to put it into a blog post or something that someone would have to read. So as you can see here by these charts, starting in the year 2020, there was a huge jump and increase in the number of videos that were uploaded to different social media platforms or just in general on the internet. and obviously as viewers, they, they followed suit. They are watching the videos if they are posting them. So there is definitely a positive correlation between the number of video uploads to the internet in comparison to the amount of videos that are being watched by consumers online. 
So I'm not going to go through all of these different statistics. If you are looking to review this webinar after it is completed, you can look that up on our YouTube channel. I will be posting that either today or Monday. But Overall, marketers do think that video does provide a positive return on investment when you are putting that time and effort and maybe even money into producing higher quality content. Um, marketers do look at video engagement to measure success, as well as understanding that there has been an increase in the consumer understanding of the business after watching a video. So that's all great, but how do consumers react to video? Video is important because 96% of consumers have watched explainer videos to learn about a product or service. 84% of consumers have made a purchase after watching a brand's video. And 69% of consumers prefer watching short videos to learn about a product or service. We're wanting to really start focusing on these really short bite-sized pieces of information that don't necessarily overwhelm someone with the amount of information all at first. I mean, I'm sure that you guys as salespeople have all had that experience where you're sitting down with a potential client and then you kind of just like give them everything. You're so excited to tell them everything that you know because you're the expert and you're so knowledgeable, but then you just tend to kind of like overwhelm someone and they're like, whoa, okay, um, this is a little bit more than I asked for. Being able to put that into video form in shorter one to two minute videos and give somebody just a taste of what they should be looking for keeps them wanting to come back to either you, your social media pages, or even your website to find out more about what you have to offer. And people consume on average 18 hours of video per week. Now, can you imagine sitting on the couch, waking up at six o'clock in the morning and watching video straight until midnight? That's essentially the amount of time that people are using to consume video content on a weekly basis. And audiences are two times as likely to share video content in comparison to other forms of media. How many times have you guys shared a funny cat video on Facebook? Point made. <laughs> So 96% of consumers say that they've watched more video content due to the pandemic. So we're wanting to really take advantage of the fact that there are so many more consumers that are wanting to consume video content. So give the people what they're asking for. So there are quite a few differences in content between different social media platforms. Um, so for example, let's go ahead and start off with TikTok. So TikTok has those really short form videos that can be anywhere from 15 seconds up to three minutes in recording in app, or you can even upload a video to the app that is up to 10 minutes in time. For Instagram, you do have your other short form content as far as reels. You can upload videos up to five minutes in time, but recording in app will be 90 seconds. Same thing with Facebook. You can upload a video up to, I believe it's actually like two hours to Facebook, but the reels are up to 90 seconds. YouTube, YouTube shorts uh, up to 60 seconds in time and have been seen to see great numbers in their social media algorithms and getting quite a few views. So Twitter, we've also got a little bit of short form as well as a little bit of long form. I would describe long form content as anything that is longer than 10 minutes, but obviously as people's attention spans have decreased quite a bit over the last couple of years, short form in in today's standards is under three minutes. So you can have those both short form and longer form videos on Twitter, LinkedIn, as well as in your Facebook newsfeed. And then when you jump over to the other more long form videos, you've obviously got YouTube where you can upload hours and hours and hours worth of content, which is also more like YouTube TV. There are quite a few people that are using YouTube as forms of entertainment. Like myself, for example, I don't have cable, so I mostly survive off of YouTube for entertainment. Um, and so for from our marketing advisors direct tip, you can capture video content in landscape orientation for YouTube, and then you can later edit the orientation to portrait mode for posting to YouTube shorts, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, so on and so forth. 
There's also additional differences in content between platforms because obviously all different types of audiences, they use different social media platforms because they have different needs. You have to decide in your business, who is my customer? Where are they? And how do I speak to them? If you have a, if you are, for example, a Medicare agent and you want to target a bunch of maybe T65 clients, or maybe you're going to be doing group retiree medical, you might be using LinkedIn as a forms of marketing yourself and posting those videos to LinkedIn, because you're going to get more bang for your buck in terms of your video editing efforts, because it does take quite a bit of time and effort as well. But in general, start with three platforms to use to market yourself, and then you can reuse that content in on different platforms because work smarter, not harder, right? Viewers today also have very high expectations in regards to video content. So you should always strive to create content that it exceeds viewer expectations. So going from the more casual end, you've got Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. So like those, the viewer expectations kind of get up a little bit higher once you hit LinkedIn. Obviously you want to be a little bit more professional and you want to be able to give this idea to a consumer base of who you are, what you do, and how what you do provides consumers with value. And then obviously we keep going up the line with TikTok, Instagram, and then YouTube as being the most professional platform, because there are obviously people that make thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars per year doing YouTube and getting paid via Google ads. But so if we are looking at the differences in length of content, whereas short form and long form content, we've on the more short form end, we've got Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, and then on the more long form end, we've got platforms like Facebook and YouTube. So consider the upload orientation when you are recording your video. So obviously in these more long form content, you're going to be using more of a landscape orientation. But for most of your short form content, that is going to be in your portrait orientation. So make sure you are definitely considering that before you sit down and record any of your videos. This is again, kind of trying to consider the mood or style or energy. Again, also kind of taking into consideration who your target audience is. So for YouTube, you've got this persona of the platform as being very professional, educational, it's TV, it's entertainment. You've got the long form and the short form. Instagram is very much about like the aesthetics. It's very engaging. You've got that wow factor. It's very pretty. And then with TikTok, it's very like entertaining. It's fun. It's organic. It's engaging. It's a little bit more of like that real life. Whereas with Instagram, it's really all about the look. And then for LinkedIn, you've got, it's very businessy, it's structured, it's very educational. And then moving up into Facebook, it's more of like you're, you're showcasing your personal brand. It's more of like a family style. It's like, you know, where you're going to sit down, eat some popcorn, watch some videos. It's great. As well as being educational and entertaining. With Twitter, you've got easy sharing. It's really quick to be able to retweet a tweet. So it is great to have that news and business form of content that is also engaging. So another mad tip, you can upload videos to your YouTube page and then share them to Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. TikTok and Instagram do require raw video file uploads if you are going to not be recording in app. So moving into content planning, a goal without a plan is just a wish. Algorithms, they do reward consistency. If you know any, or if you watch YouTube videos, if there are any certain channels that you tend to follow, you know what days that they upload. You know that they upload on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and you are right there on the computer at two o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Standard, to watch their videos. So making sure that whatever you're doing in your content strategy, that you are consistent. So you can also do that by developing an outline. So Always make sure that your content is planned out ahead of time to make sure that you are hitting all of the points that you want to speak about, but then is not so much so that you're like reading from a script because again, that doesn't really seem very organic. And we want to be able to convey to your consumer that you are a more like organic business owner. You're a real person with real struggles and real and you're helping them with real problems, but you want to come off as professional, but not scripted. 
And again, like I had said earlier, work smarter, not harder. If you're recording video content for YouTube, you can also edit down those videos into smaller, more bite-sized chunks and post them to other platforms such as TikTok or YouTube. Okay, so when you are planning out your content, if you have questions about what sort of content to put out, you can use Google as a resource. If you type into Google Medicare insurance, you can also go down to the questions that other people will ask. And you can use those as a drop down and come up with different ideas and questions and be able to answer the questions that people are already asking online. You want to position yourself as a fountain of insurance knowledge. So make sure that you are answering the questions that tons of people are already asking. So before you hit record, you want to sit down in a quiet, well-lit room with sound dampening materials. I do not recommend recording in your kitchen where there are lots of hard surfaces. You are going to want to make sure that you are recording in a room with lots of either couches or carpeting or something with, maybe you grab a couple of your kids' stuffed animals, <laughs> whatever the case may be. Uh, but you also want to be able to make sure that you have a camera on a tripod with an external microphone. The external microphone is extremely important. Viewers will forgive poor upload quality, but they will not forgive poor sound quality. If you do not want to invest in a professional microphone, or if you find that that sort of equipment is just not going to be convenient for you to use, you can use a pair of Bluetooth earbuds. Just like, you know, go ahead and you can use record with your phone and then use your Bluetooth earbuds. Maybe have one in front of you, or maybe just like hidden, maybe under, under your lapel, or just even wearing it in your ear. That is going to create so much better sound quality than you would if you were to just not have a microphone at all. So again, make sure that you have no pets, no kids or other family members running around because it does tend to be a little bit distracting when somebody is watching your video. If you do want to make a small investment, you can get foam panels. Actually, let me show you what I did. I had a little arts and crafts project. You can just glue some foam panels to a cardboard box and you can use this as a form of sound dampening materials. And they're fairly inexpensive, especially if you get them off of Amazon. Also, another thing that we want to consider is the natural light. The natural light should be hitting your face. It should not be coming from above you or behind you. It should be coming towards you. And you want to make sure that you are focusing on light that is more of like a balance between a soft white light and then like the harsh yellow. You don't want like too cool or too yellow. You want it to be natural white here in the middle. If you are looking to invest in a, perhaps like even like a ring light, we actually just ordered these here for our staff members. We've got these little clip on ring lights and they clip right onto your laptop. So then whenever you're presenting or something, you've got lots of nice natural light. So 10 out of 10 would recommend those. So before you sit down and hit record, make sure that you conduct a test video to make sure that you are testing the quality as uh, in the video, as well as your lighting and your sound. You do want to make sure that you are positioned in the center of the frame, not over here to this side, not over here to this side. You want to make sure your head's not chopped off. You don't want to like be down here. You want to make sure that you're centered in the frame. You are the main attraction. So make sure that you're centered in that frame. So when you are sitting down to capture your high quality video, you want to have presence, create energy. I'm not saying that you have to be like bouncing off the walls or be like, ah, like you don't have to be an entertainer, but you should be engaging. You should have presence. Presence is confidence without arrogance. That's an Amy Cuddy book, which I also recommend that you, that you guys read. <laughs> And then when you are starting down to record your video, you should be looking directly into the camera lens as if that person that is watching the video on the other end is right there in front of you. Be engaging, look directly into the camera. And then also making sure that you speak slowly, clearly, and make sure to enunciate. I sometimes have a, a bit of difficulty with that myself, but I always do try to reel it back in. And if there is ever a time that I want to go back and re-record that section, maybe if my speech wasn't as clear, I can always go back and redo it again. And because the reason for this, that you want to make sure you're focusing on these really high quality videos is that the longer the watch time, the higher the reach and views. 
I know that we had kind of briefly touched on this at the beginning of the presentation was that the longer that you have an audience member retained in their attention, the longer that this, the more that the social media algorithm will show that video to more viewers. If you have a video completion time from that is into like the 92, even up to 100%, the social media algorithm is going to show that video to more people because that is a signal to the algorithm that it's great content and that it's something that people really want to watch. So more people are going to be able to see it because the algorithm is going to show it or recommend it to more people in their news feeds. So as we are kind of like developing this of why is high quality video important? The reason is because people have a lot on their minds, their attention spans are short, and in today's market, everybody is fighting for viewer attention. There are so many distractions that we have nowadays and so many businesses that are marketing to us and trying to capture our attention. So make sure that you are capturing their attention with a good hook. A hook is something that will entice your audience at the beginning of each video with a commanding statement. Then once you jump into, once you are done with your hook statement, you should give yourself a 30 second elevator pitch that provides credibility to your audience. The 30 second credibility should be who you are, what you do, and how what you do provides value. So for example, if you were to produce a video either for YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, whatever, you could say, here are the 10 things that you didn't know about Medicare Advantage. Hi, my name is John Smith. I'm a Medicare agent. I've been working in the Medicare industry for the past 20 years. I absolutely love what I do because I get to help senior citizens make proper Medicare choices for them that help save them money. And then that's it. That's how you get people to really stick to what you're talking about. But make sure again to keep it short. Get to the point of the video in under 60 seconds because otherwise you are going to lose that person's attention. People want you to get right to the meat and potatoes of the content. So make sure you don't drag that out. And as a mad tip, when you're transitioning from topic to topic within your video, start off each topic with a commanding statement question or a hook. So again, say for example, you're doing, hey, these are the 10 things that you didn't know about Medicare. You can, once you go in from your first point, before you jump into your second point, you can say, the second thing that you didn't know about Medicare is, use it as a complete sentence. So going into your commanding statement, you, these are just some examples. Medicare Advantage plans usually have $0 monthly premiums, while Medicare supplements rain, will range in price in for monthly premiums, and here's why. You kind of want to give someone a, an idea of what you're going to be speaking about. Get them reeled in and give them a little bit of information before moving on. And then in terms of hooks, hooks are something that are really going to like grab somebody's attention. So for example, that would be like $0 monthly premium or $300 monthly premium, which sounds better to you. Obviously, as a consumer, they're going to be like, well, does $0 monthly premium sounds much better. But again, it is your job to be able to outline the differentiations between whatever different product lines or different insurance products that are out there. You are obviously going to educate the person once they are in their appointment as to which types of products are going to be right for them. But you want to grab their attention and get them to get to know you before they book an appointment. So capturing high quality video, you want to use these commanding statements of hooks and hooks because again, it gives a taste of the content topic and further establishes your credibility because it creates for a smoother transition between videos and it allows you to have multiple videos in one recording session. Again, like I said, work smarter, not harder. And then you'll also want to be using a closing statement as well, which can be a question. You can ask them to comment below. And again, that's something that you should always be doing in every single one of your videos is giving some sort of call to action that doesn't have to do with calling you. That's the thing. So many agents that I see, they're like, oh, well, here, call me if you want to set up an appointment. Listen, this is, we're, we're it's like starting a relationship. You don't want somebody to be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to call you right before the first date. No, you want to make sure that you are developing that relationship with them first and getting them intrigued, keep them coming back for more. 
So you should be encouraging them to engage with your content, not to contact you because that's the a surefire way to get somebody turned off to whatever you just had to say. So throughout your video, give your viewers a call to action that will increase your engagement and engagement on videos is anything that where somebody took some sort of action on your post, a comment, a like, a share, something like that. Your the social media algorithms, they prioritize content that has higher engagement. So the higher that your engagement is, the more reach that you will get, therefore, the more likelihood that you will have more people that will see that content. And so again, making sure that you would do a sign off, thank them for watching, and then again, give them a call to action. That call to action can even be share this video if you enjoyed it, make sure to like the video. And if you're posting to YouTube, always make sure that you encourage that viewer to subscribe to your YouTube channel. Okay, transitions. Transitions make for more high quality content. So if you are ever in the middle of recording a video and you're just like, oh my gosh, deer in the headlights, brain fart. I totally forgot what I was about to say. As opposed to saying like, um, uh, oh, mm -hmm. just pause in silence, maintain your facial expression, and then just pick up where you left off. It is much easier to edit out small pauses than it is to pick up right where you left off after going, um, ah, uh, mm, ah, uh, mm which brings me to my next point. Avoid saying, um, these ums, all of these noises that we make when we are trying to not have blank space. It is just something that goes on in our minds, but it is extremely distracting. And unless you want to sit there for four hours editing out all of the ums, I recommend not doing it. Your audience will start turning it into a drinking game. So let's not do that. <laughs> so what comes after you record your video? You should be taking a YouTube thumbnail, especially this is if you are posting to YouTube, but make sure you snap a, a thumbnail image. And this is the make it or break it of your content. You should be using some form of an exaggerated expression. And it's okay if it feels gimmicky because honestly, gimmicky thumbnails get more views. If you scroll into YouTube right now and you start going through the different feed or different like videos that are recommended to you, take a look at how many thumbnail images have some form of an exaggerated expression, as whether it's negative or positive, you should always be like shocked or exaggerated in some form. So then also after recording, it is time to edit your video. You can add in graphics, background music, transitions, B-rolls, and more. And you should also have frequent changes of frame in order to retain attention anywhere between 15 to 30 seconds in time. So after recording, every video should be a searchable hook, such as severing differences between Medicare Advantage and Medicare Supplements, Med Advantage versus Med Sup, which is better, five things you probably didn't know about Medicare, and before you enroll in Medicare, watch this. These are things that are going to intrigue an audience. Oh, five things I didn't know about Medicare. I've got time for five things I didn't know about Medicare. And if you used Google to find these content topics, you already have a good idea for hooks that will be useful to your audience. Because if these are the questions that audience members are already searching for, you know that they're searching for this content somewhere online. Give it to them. So for SEO purposes, make sure that you add your business name and the title of your video when someone is Googling your business. So that way YouTube will display in the search results. So again, after recording, this is if you are posting to YouTube in particular, but make sure that you are detailing your description box. So in your description box, you should have a two sentence synopsis of whatever the video was about, kind of give them like a little bit of taste or like basically just like a, a short of what was going on. And then make sure you have a call to action. You should also be linking your contact information as, as far as your telephone number, your email address, and perhaps even your physical address if you have a physical brick and mortar agency. You should also be linking to your website. You can do that on YouTube. Other platforms, it's a, uh, it's a little bit different. I'll be able to kind of explain where you can link your website on your other social media platforms as we get into that later. 
And then you can also be linking your other social media pages. So if you have a YouTube channel, but you also have a Twitter account, a LinkedIn account, a Facebook account, you can use those links from the URLs, post them in the description box of your YouTube video so that then that viewer can go and see your content on your other platforms. And then they'll obviously be able to find out a little bit more about you and your personal brand. And then you can also provide links to your other YouTube videos as well. Like you can say, oh, here are the three differences between Medicare Advantage and Medicare Supplement. And if you're giving them readily that information, more than likely they will be able to click on those videos and watch more of yours. And then also hashtags. Hashtags are extremely important because hashtags are a way to categorize or essentially the best way that I can kind of describe it is put your content into a folder amongst other pieces of content that use that same hashtag. So then when there are viewers that are searching through content, if they're looking through content under the hashtag Medicare 101, they are going to see your content in within that folder of the Medicare 101 hashtag. So again, what comes after recording, in order to boost reach and engagement, make sure that you are frequently responding to comments because whether someone else is commenting or if you're commenting, it still counts as engagement, which therefore increases your views and also will help develop a relationship of trust and rapport with that audience member. So if somebody is asking you questions in the comments, you can either answer their question with another video or you can just reply to the comment, you know, in another comment or just a reply. But personally, I would do both. So let's go ahead and jump into navigating social media in order to post your videos. So once all of your videos are all edited and you're happy with the final result, it's time to post them to social media. So if you are going to be posting on Facebook, here in this bottom left corner, you can go to your Facebook business page and you can click on create post. You can either post a photo or a video. If it's under 90 seconds, you can post a reel. And then once you click on that, you are gonna see this little screen over here that says add photos and videos. So what you wanna do is you are making sure that you are uploading any MP4 files if you are going to be uploading your video. And then once you are done, you've got all your video put in there. You've also got any captions, related hashtags. Make sure that every single video that you post, you are also using a location tag. The physical location of either where you, where's your base of operations, even if you don't have a brick and mortar agency, even if like most of the time you work from home or you're always on the road, tag the city that you live in. Just so that then if somebody else is going through other forms of content, in the city that you live in, they will be able to use that, they will be able to see that tag and see what else is going on in their city and come across your content. So it's very important. And another really cool thing about Facebook is that you have access to Meta Business Suite, which is another way that you can schedule your videos so that then they can be posted at optimum times. And it's, it's, it's one of those things that I really wish that we didn't have to do, but it's like, but you just do. You have to make sure that you're posting your content when viewers are online and ready to engage with your content. There is absolutely no point in posting content at midnight, 11 o'clock at night, or even you know, two o'clock in the afternoon when nobody's online. You wanna make sure that you are posting your content when your potential audience is online. Okay, so going into YouTube, if you're posting to YouTube, what you'll do is you will go into your YouTube channel and then click on the little icon that's in the top right hand corner that's got that little camera with the plus sign on it, you will click on that, and then you will click on the icon that says upload video. Once you get to that, it will give you the option to either drag and drop video files to upload or you can just upload them from your, from your, your drive. And then that's when you will type in the video title as well as put in your description. One of the things that is very important to know in regards to YouTube is that you do have to select whether content is made for kids or not made for kids. It has a lot to do with advertising and FCC requirements for um, content that is geared towards children. So just make sure that it's always at no, this is not made for kids. 
So going into Instagram. So if you are going to be using Instagram to upload any content, you can first, I'm going to start up here in this upper left-hand corner where it says your story. Story content is very important because it is short 24 hour long content. I'm sorry, the content isn't 24 hours long, but the content exists within stories for 24 hours. And it's, and it's a great way to really physically engage with your audience pretty much in real time. You can post things like dropping off your kids at school or like going out to get ice cream and really just like showing people that you're a real person. And it kind of helps just like develop that relationship a little bit more. So if you want to post either a video or a photo to Instagram, you are going to first click on that little plus sign that's right next to the Instagram sign next to the heart. And then that will give you an option to either post a story, a reel, or just like a post in general. And so you will click on whichever form of media that you're going to be uploading. And then you can go to uh, posting from either your gallery or your drafts. This little button down here where I have it circled that's next to that small camera button, that is the button that you will press if you want to upload multiple pieces of media at the same time. And then the small camera icon to the right of that, that is what you will click on if you want to capture a photo or a video in the moment. And you can also add things like filters, which personally I'm against filters, but that's just that's just me. Um, and then once you go through and write out your captions, you can tag certain people or products, or you can even add the message button. And again, also make sure you are always tagging your location. That is so, so, so important. You can also do things like add music to a singular image post, which I do recommend because it's another great way to share that, uh, to get your content to be viewed for longer periods of time because if somebody's sitting there listening to the music that's overlaid on a graphic image they will more likely be viewing that piece of content longer which will therefore push more of your content into that person's feed okay so if we are posting to tiktok this one I'm going to try to keep this about as brief and simple as I can because there's lots of intricacies to posting to TikTok. Um, if you guys ever have any questions about what to do with TikTok, really how to upload, what sort of content to post, please, you can email me. Um, I will provide my contact information at the end of uh, this presentation. So feel free to, to email me if you have any questions. So what you'll want to do if you are posting to TikTok, you can either upload or you can record in app. If you are going to be recording in app, you can uh, press the little plus signs that are right down there at the bottom of each page. And you can also save videos to your drafts. I am a drafting queen. <laughs> I Sometimes I will spend about three or four hours just recording content just because I've, I've got it in my mind, I've, I'm, I'm in the groove. And then I will save all of that content to my drafts so that then I can upload the content when I, when I want to and when the time is more optimum for more viewers to view the content. So if you are going to be posting photos, which you can also do on TikTok as well, you can go to the templates portion where you can select all your photos and then it will time them to music and it also like cut them in cool ways. So I recommend doing that as well. If you maybe have some photos from an event that you went to, or maybe if you're just showing off an interaction that you had with a client, you can do that too. Now, again, like I'd said before, you can record in TikTok uh, in th three minutes, 60 second or 15 second intervals. Keep in mind too, that if you, if you choose the three minute option, you, you don't have to record for three entire minutes. You can record for three seconds if you want to, but that setting just allows you to record up to three minutes, 60 seconds, or 15 seconds in time. And then also, again, make sure that you are using optimum uh, hooks in the forms of your descriptions. So like this one, three more ways to make big money selling insurance. These are great hooks because it's something that people would probably want to know about. And so again, we are tagging our physical location, and then you can also add links. You can add a link to your website if you want as well, um, if the app will let you. <laughs> I think it depends on the number of followers that you have. But again, you can always uh, select to post it either to your Instagram account, you can add it to your stories, you can also post it to Snapchat, or you can also save it to your drafts for a later time, or you can just post it in the moment. So posting to Twitter is obviously a lot more simple because there's really, 
there is an option to record in app, but personally, I don't think that it's really worth it because the quality is going to be a lot lower than it would be if you were to just record on your phone and then just post it from there. So what you're going to do is you are going to start a tweet. You can click on the small little media icon to, again, you can upload either pictures or videos. And again, if you are going to be posting anything to any of your social media pages to, again, use hashtags and location tags. Okay, so do you need help capturing and editing high quality video content for your business? Because if so, we here at Marketing Advisors Direct can help you with that. Uh, Marketing Advisors Direct, or MAD as we'd like to call it, is a digital marketing service aimed at helping independent insurance agents and agencies build their book of business by reaching clients in the digital age. So since you guys have attended this webinar, you can e email us for a free PDF guide to capturing high quality video content. One of these guides is more targeted towards recording for YouTube, and then the other one is a little bit more targeted towards um, recording content for uh, short form content, such as like Instagram Reels, Facebook Reels, TikTok, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Oh my gosh, sorry. Words are hard. <laughs> And since you are an IAD contracted agent, you receive 50% off of MAD services. So if you are interested in graphic design, website, SEO, or CRM, you can contact our marketing manager, Lynette. And then if you are interested in enrolling in a social media marketing program, or if you are interested in video editing, you can contact myself. And that is my contact information there. So that is our email. I'll kind of like let that sit there for anybody who's interested in it. I'll just give you another moment to write down our email addresses there if you don't have them already. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the floor for questions. Oh, okay, so Sharon, yes. So the equipment that I'm using right now for recording uh, this presentation is I'm just on my on my laptop. I have, for reference, I do use a MacBook Pro. And again, I have this like little ring light. I want to say it was like $25 on Amazon. If you are looking into investing in some really, really great lighting equipment, um, for those of you who actually don't know, I'm actually a freelance makeup artist on the weekends. And so I have my ring light, which actually conveniently I have here in the office. So I got my my big boy. This is the one that I take with me when I go see clients. Um, but I've had it in the office for the past couple of days because we've been doing some extra projects around here. But yeah, if you're looking to invest in one of those larger ring lights, you can get them on Amazon. I want to say that one is about $125. Um, but it's something that's great. It folds up really well. You can just put it in the bag and then it's good to go. But yeah, are there any other questions? Okie doke, guys. Well, if nobody has any further questions, um, I will go ahead and end it here. I am, Guys, thank you so, so much for attending this webinar today. I was very excited to deliver this information to you. And again, if you have any questions about capturing high quality video content or uploading to social media, please let me know. Again, this webinar will be up on our YouTube channel either today or Monday. And I am very thankful for you guys all attending and I will see you guys soon. Bye everyone.